Hello everyone, happy Sunday to you and welcome to this new edition of Political Peaks. I'm Diego Romo. Today on the show we continue our tax restructuring coverage as we highlight a proposal for education funding by state lawmakers. And then we stay at Capitol Hill today as we discuss the upcoming 2020 legislative session. We have a lot to cover today on Political Peaks, so let's get right into it. Just a couple of weeks ago, I sat down with Heidi Matthews, the president of the Utah Education Association, the state's largest public education employee association, about the effects of the proposed tax changes, especially in the realm of education. One of the biggest proposed tax changes is the removal of a constitutional earmark that tied state income tax revenue directly to public education funding. Here is Heidi now on how the removal of that earmark would affect Utah students. Right now, constitutionally mandated, income tax goes to public education. The tax proposal says slashing hundreds, both in, in an income tax reduction and an increase on exemptions and all sorts of shifting, shifting around. And, and what that would mean, if that's all that happened, would be devastating to, to, to public education and would, would not be fulfilling the, the promise that we have as the, the state of Utah to um, educate and support our, our students throughout the state. Heidi mentioned that there was major concern among many public education advocates within the state that legislators will not meet their obligations to fund education without a constitutional mandate to do so. Well, state legislators responded to those concerns earlier this week and hinted at a possible solution that may be made public sometime next week. According to utahpolicy.com, lawmakers are considering a quote, mechanism to tie property tax revenue that already goes to schools to the economy, most likely through inflation. But that plan has already received major pushback, as many lawmakers within the state will be weary to raise property taxes due to Utah's truth in taxation policy. For those not familiar, the basics of the truth in taxation policy state that anytime local officials want to raise property taxes, they must inform the community first before doing so. Also according to utahpolicy.com, state legislators also push back against the claim that they would not adequately fund education without a constitutional mandate by adding a guarantee from the state to fully fund annual growth in student populations, either by directly tying the weighted pupil unit, which is the basic unit of funding used in Utah schools, directly to inflation, or by creating a constitutional amendment that guarantees a certain percent of the state's budget annually goes to education. Here is Heidi with more. We need the resources to be able to level the playing field for all of our students so that then when they get to school they are, are safe and they have nutrition, they're, they're rested, and they, they can be set up for, for learning and, and thriving. Until we see that there is a commitment to funding our enrollment enrollment growth to funding inflation and to funding these awesome plans that we have out there. We've got the governor's roadmap for success. We've got the, the USBE strategic plan. We've got the Envision Utah, how we can address the, the teacher shortage, which I like to call the, the educator exodus. We have plans out there and we, we know how much it's going to cost to move the needle and yet we're fundamentally planning our education system around the funding rather than funding the plans. We will continue to keep you updated with any new developments regarding Utah's proposed tax restructuring. Also, if you want to learn more about how these changes could affect Utah's education system, I highly encourage you to head to myuea.org and head to the Under the Dome tab to learn more. The 2020 legislative session in Utah hasn't even begun, and lawmakers have already filed 900 bills in the state, with one individual state legislator accounting for 50 of those bills. According to State House Majority Leader Francis Gibson of Mapleton, this is the second highest number of official bill requests at this time before any general session. The 2020 legislative session begins on January 27th and ends a quick 45 days later. We will preview some of those bills right here on Political Peaks as we get closer to that date. Thank you so very much for tuning in to Political Peaks today. I really hope you enjoyed our coverage. And as always, you can follow us on all of our social media at Park City TV and head over to parkcity.tv for more great community coverage. I hope you enjoy the rest of your weekend and have an amazing Thanksgiving with your family. I'll see you right here next time on Political Peaks.